welcome everybody to the afternoon session of uh, our screen workshop. So the first speaker will be Wojciech Kaminski from the University of Warsaw, which will tell us about conformal Einstein's equation. So, so thank you very much for the invitation to, to give a talk. Unfortunately, I cannot be in Iwawa, but I hope uh, people there are, have fun. So uh, I will be speaking about something that I, unfortunately I put it on archive a bit too late and it will appear tomorrow. But uh, so there will be some, if you want to look at that, it will be some uh, paper about that. So, so what, what is the top, the uh, uh, question that uh, um, I would like to answer in this talk is uh, uh, a question about stability of the asymptotically simple uh, future asymptotically simple solutions so as we know so uh, it's about the uh, lorentzian geometry so we have solutions of einstein equations with say positive cosmological constant that extend up to um, uh, future conformal boundary and so this uh, positive cosmological constant is in order that this uh, boundary is space like Wojtek, uh, are you yes. talking about four-dimensional Lorentzian space-times or in okay. any dimension? So it will be mainly about uh, any even dimension. So also four, but uh, in case of the four dimensions, it's uh, something that was uh, already known. Okay, so, so this method that I will be um, uh, talking about, it gives also some probably new informations in four dimensions, but it's mostly interested in the dimension, uh, say, uh, higher than four. So from physical point of view, maybe it's not as uh, important, but, but maybe it's also shedding some, some light on the four dimensions. So it's, it's okay? Oh. Okay, so, so what, is the, what is the goal of... Uh, 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 so... Uh, we would like to know whether if we perturb a bit such a solution, so say initial data on some Cauchy surface, whether it's still uh, uh, asymptotically simple or may, maybe whether they always, even under very small perturbation, the singularity forms uh, before we reach this uh, uh, infinite future. And of course, why, why it's, uh, it's difficult it's difficult because if we say consider Einstein equations in terms of this uh, rescaled metric, the one that is smoothly extending by this by this uh, boundary, then the Einstein equations are uh, singular. So no, normally, okay, in some specific gauge, Einstein equations are hyperbolic. So then the stability is uh, ensured by some properties of hyperbolic uh, uh, evolution. But here, this boundary is. Uh, from the point of view of this smooth metric is singular, so we cannot say much about it. So, but people already uh, uh, 40 years ago, uh, Friedrich invented a method how to overcome this difficulty. And uh, his method is the following. So it, it's quite simple, but very, okay, simple in the idea. And, and uh, so let's replace uh, Einstein equation by some more general equation, the one that um, uh, so more general in the sense that uh, every solution of Einstein equation is also a solution of this uh, more general one. And, but with property that they transform nicely. So say they are conformally invariant. And of course, if they, they nicely transform under conformal transformations, then they will, uh, the evolution will go through this, um, uh, um, uh, this conformal boundary of our space time. Of course, the important uh, is that this system is hyperbolic. So it's uh, like uh, uh, Einstein equation is uh, hyperbolic in say specific gauge. And of course, uh, so then, then if, we, if we think for a moment, if we give the initial data for this system, it will evolve. So it will evolve all up to this uh, conformal boundary. And if we make the small perturbation, this evolution only slightly will change. This singularity will uh, form after this uh, conformal boundary. So conformal boundary still will be asymptotically simple. Of course, there is additional uh, uh, a point that we want that also the uh, property of being Einstein also propagates uh, in, in, this, in this system. So if it's initial data is Einsteinian, then of course it will be also Einsteinian all the time. 
Okay, and, but this solution uh, of Friedrich is uh, uh, tailored to the three plus one dimension. So it's, it's one probably cannot extend it to, to higher dimensions. And, and has also, it, it, some just a bit uh, very clever, but a, a bit random set of differential equations. Okay, so, so then people invented something uh, that I would like to talk about. Uh, and uh, Mike Anderson in 15 years ago, invented the, the following uh, replacement for this uh, system of Friedrich. And the observation is that uh, the Pfefferman-Graham abstraction tensor uh, vanish if the uh, Einstein equations are satisfied. And so, so okay, so it's more general. Uh, it's also very nicely transformed under conformal transformation. So it satisfied this list of uh, Friedrich. And uh, of course, the, 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 what is the problem? Uh, the, the problem is whether it's uh, uh, well posed. So whether it's, uh, it's hyperbolic system. So if it's hyperbolic, then it's, uh, it's very, very nice replacement because, okay, it has much nicer properties it's uh, satisfied Bianchi identity similar to, to Einstein. So this tensor is very, very nice. And there is uh, additionally this Lagrangian formulation. So Lagr at least in physics, Lagrangian uh, theories are uh, much more uh, useful than just some random set of uh, uh, partial differential equations. And, and in 4D, uh, in fact, proof of this well-posedness uh, it's, it was from 70s because it's uh, uh, this, this Lagrangian. Okay, so the general, it's, we can take it as a Q curvature of Branson or some other object, but in, in 4D, it's Vi square. And people were considered it as a vile gravity. And uh, in, uh, in 4D, it was, uh, it was already a long time proven that it's well posed. But in higher dimensions, it, it's, uh, there was no no uh, 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 correct proof that, that it's, it's really a uh, uh, hyperbolic equation. Of course, so uh, uh, maybe it's not sound so exciting, but we see that it's also involves some very nice uh, geometric structure. So the, the proof that it's, uh, it, the evolution is uh, well posed. So, so maybe, maybe before I will remind shortly uh, how it is uh, how it is working for the Einstein equations? So it's it's uh, it's a quite famous result of Shock and Brouha. Uh, and of course, we know that uh, that um, uh, Einstein equation, just Einstein equation. Is, okay, uh, we cannot if we have initial data for Einstein equation, we cannot predict the future in the naive sense because we always can apply some diffeomorphism. And the metric in the future will be changed. So it's not well posed in the, in the trivial way. However, it, it, it might be well posed in the, uh, in the specific gauge. So suppose that uh, we're looking for the Ricci tensor. So, so that's why we need some gauge fixing. And this is one, one thing. And the second thing, of course, you, we need the constraint. So initial data, it's not completely free, but there need to be some, uh, impose some additional constraints. Okay, and, and this method of shaker brouha is the following. So let us first look at the uh, Ricci tensor in, say, harmonic gauge. So harmonic gauge is when this F mu is equal to zero. So this F mu is uh, basically a D'Alembert operator on the, uh, on the coordinate, uh, on the all, all possible coordinates on, uh, in our system. So D'Alembert operator is this... Uh, Laplacian in, uh, uh, in Lorentzian geometry. Okay, so, so if, uh, if um, uh, this uh, condition is satisfied, then this uh, Ricci tensor is equal to this E mu nu, and uh, it has very specific form. It's uh, basically the, this D'Alembert on, on the metric, uh, plus some function of the first, uh, uh, first derivatives of the metric. And, and uh, this equation one can already solve. 
because this is quasi-linear wave equation and it is well posed. So all equations of this form, that is uh, this box u plus some uh, small reminder equal to zero is well posed in the sense that there exists a local solution. It's unique. Uh, everything pro propagates with the speed of light. So speed of light with respect to this metric. And uh, it's uh, the small changes uh, of the initial data making all the only small changes of the solution. So, <clears throat> so this is well posed. Okay, so let us solve this equation. So let us solve the equation in this specific gauge. Of course, once we solve it with the initial data, we don't know still that the Ricci, tens uh, Ricci tensor uh, is zero. So we only know that E is zero. So in order to know that, uh, that we have solution of Einstein equation, we need to know also that the gauge is satisfied, that, so that this F is equal to zero. And now this, uh, so what is clever in this method that in fact, we can deduce this already using Bianchi identities. Our Bianchi identities are just always satisfied, but if E is zero, so this is this equation here, then it's turned out that they are giving us also the some linear uh, wave equation for F. So if F vanish on initial surface, then it vanish everywhere. And if F vanish, then R is zero. So the Ricci, Ricci tensor. And, and then it turned out that uh, if uh, we impose uh, uh, this gauge on this initial surface and the constraints are satisfied, then it's exactly this initial data for F and uh, we can apply this method, okay? So let us uh, try to do it for this uh, Anderson approach. <coughs> and of course, it may work quite well because there are similar Bianchi identities. So this, uh, this, uh, this tensor, uh, uh, Pfefferman-Graham tensor is quite nice. Uh, of course, we have a bit more um, uh, gauge freedom because additionally to the, to the diffeomorphism, we have also um, uh, um, uh, conformal transformation. So we, we, we fixing it not only by the um, harmonic gauge, but also we assume that, uh, that uh, Ricci's scalar is zero. This uh, we can always, um, uh, 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 this, this gauge one can always locally at least uh, achieve because it's also the hyperbolic system starting from the initial, uh, initial surface. Okay, we have constraints. These constraints are of course uh, now for the initial data. The initial data is not on the, like for Einstein equation metric and the first derivative. Of course, one can reduce it a bit more, but, but here there's many, many derivatives of the metric because this uh, Pfefferman-Graham tensor is of uh, quite high order. And, and in this, uh, in this specific gauge, the equation takes such a form. So it's, uh, it's uh, looking very similar to this, uh, uh, to this um, uh, uh, quasi-linear wave equation, except that this uh, principal symbol if of, is, of, uh, um, uh, is uh, D'Alembertian to the power d by two. We always assume here that the dimension is uh, even. And, and now it's, uh, some, some fact that for the, the hyperbolic, so uh, hyperbolic word is much more complicated that, uh, so Lorentzian word is more complicated than Euclidean word. And uh, in case of Euclidean signature, if you would have the, some operator that starts with the Laplacian to some power, it is elliptic. So it's, uh, the solutions will be smooth, I, I like, uh, yeah, solution will be smooth. So it's, it's quite nice. And uh, it's turned out that in the hyperbolic world, uh, it may happen that uh, despite the fact that this is, uh, this principal symbol is uh, some, it's hyperbolic. Uh, so it's uh, 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 hyperbolic polynomial. It's turned out that uh, such a system might be not well posed. So it's, it's, uh, it's even for linear, if we, if we forget about uh, nonlinearity. So we have linear system with such leading symbol, so leading principal symbol, 
Then it's turned out that uh, uh, there are equations where for the given smooth initial data, there exists no, uh, no development at all. So it's quite, uh, quite, quite different than in elliptic case. Okay, so this is, this is the problem. And uh, uh, so, uh, of course, uh, uh, I, like Einstein equation or this uh, Pfeffermann-Graham, so I will call maybe it anderson pfeffermann graham equation. So they, uh, they are nonlinear, they're quite complicated, but one can see that some of the similar phenomenon is for the uh, conformal power of Laplacian. So, okay, in this case, uh, D'Alembert, conformal powers of the Alembert operators, these DJMS uh, operators. And, and maybe let's first ask, uh, answer why, why this is uh, well posed in this case. Okay, so, uh, so in order to, to understand why it is well posed, we should uh, look at for a moment for this ambient metric construction that nevertheless we'll need to later use for the, for the evolution of uh, Pfeffermann-Graham uh, uh, equation. And, uh, and uh, so we introduce this ambient metric. So to our manifold, we add two new coordinates, T and rho. So, as Pfefferman Graham, I, in this is for T, I will denote zero, and for rho, I will denote infinity, and with such a metric. So, so for this moment, it will not be important. Uh, of course, this metric is determined by some, uh, some conditions, but for the evolution of this um, uh, um, uh, conformal powers of Laplacians, uh, this is not as important. So, we have such a metric. So, this rho tilde. We should think we, we can think as a row depending metric on our manifold M. So it's uh, this uh, a variable t is uh, uh, is uh, is uh, variable in the, the direction of the Killing vector. So we have this Killing vector t. And then uh, maybe let us say what what does it mean for the uh, for the field to uh, satisfy this uh, this operate this uh, this equation. So we can translate it into the D'Alembert uh, um, uh, equation on this ambient space. We've, uh, we've conditioned that the, this phi is uh, invariant with respect to, to this vector field T, so it's, in, it's T independent. And, uh, and uh, this condition is in fact not for the whole uh, uh, field, but only for some Part of the Taylor expansion, so I will always denote in this way the Taylor expansion for uh, up to order d by two minus one. And uh, and why I say equivalent? Of course, it's in, it's not very precise statement, but the zero order of this expansion of this phi, bold phi, is our uh, 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 our uh, field uh, field phi. But, but the rest of these orders can be determined recursively from this equation um, of the D'Alembert phi equal to uh, all zero up to specific order. And, and in fact, it, it's maybe uh, illuminating so to write it in terms of the uh, section of this phi for t equal to one. So of course, t, uh, this phi is t independent, so we can always uh, compute it on and t, it doesn't matter. And then if we write um, uh, the uh, Taylor expansion of this, of this equation, we're getting something like that. So you see that we have uh, every higher uh, Taylor uh, expansion of phi can be computed from the previous one up to this uh, specific order d by two minus one in which we're getting some non-trivial equation and this equation exactly p phi equal to zero. And, and and this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, um, uh, expansion is appearing in all this uh, construction for, uh, from, from ambient metric, and maybe I will just call it recursive to, to have some, some name for that. Okay, so we just can compute, determine them recursively and plug, plug back, okay? So now from the point of view of, uh, of uh, uh, evolution, this is not the right thing. So we should think about uh, 
this uh, this uh, uh, Tyler expansion as independent variables, and we write equation for all of them as as uh, some matrix equation, and and this is still not not uh, a good um, um, uh, hyperbolic system. Why it's not good? Because there is, uh, if one look at this first term here, so this first term, they um, um, uh, in the given Taylor order, there are also some uh, um, a second order differential equation that are non-diagonal in this in this initial matrix. So if you like, this is this first matrix is of all the second derivatives that we have. So they act on our fields. And the second part is uh, some addition that we have here. So this is not, not strictly hyperbolic system. This is, uh, it's a low diagonal. But, uh, but one can uh, um, uh, transform it into, into strictly hyperbolic by the following trick that one uh, somehow change the order of uh, all of this uh, phi k, so this Tyler expansion of our field. So, you remind that uh, this Tyler expansion we have here. So this is this equation for this uh, 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 specific parts of the Tyler expansion. But if we uh, if we transform them by this, uh, this Laplacian here is uh, some auxiliary Laplacian in this space-like direction. So then, uh, after commuting, so this is pseudo differential operator, so it's no longer standard differential system, but it's more or less working similarly. But now if we, if we look how it's written in terms of this U, it's turned out that these uh, stars here that were second order differential operator, they are um, uh, gaining some inverse power of L. So this L is a first order pseudo differential operator. So inverse power is, is minus uh, one order. So altogether these, uh, these stars here stopping to be the highest order uh, differential operation and we're getting the, the system that is uh, in the standard uh, linear uh, uh, hyperbolic way. And, and this in fact showing well post well posedness of this system. In fact one, one need to use so in order to have uh, um, to know that the solution is, uh, uh, um, uh, the solution uh, of this system is also a solution of our original equation. We need to first compute the initial data using this recursive relation, then we evolve. And if we evolve, we need to also check that it's still the, uh, the initial data still agree with what we would get from the, um, from the taking the high derivatives of phi on this um, Cauchy surface, but, but this is fact, so one can check. That. Okay, so, so this was for this um, uh, GJMS operators, but in fact, uh, something very similar one can apply for the um, uh, um, uh, for nonlinear uh, uh, equations. So we would like to know whether in a uh, in similar way we can uh, treat the, uh, our uh, equation for the Pfeffermann-Graham tensor. Okay, so, so maybe I will, so from this point of view, I, I will only now say uh, what are these conditions for the ambient metric. And I will only say the conditions for the being ambient and for vanishing of this abstraction tensor in one go. But uh, from, the point of view, uh, from, uh, from the point of view of this dynamical system, it's important to divide these uh, conditions into say three, three parts. So the first part is, is uh, I would say, geometric. So that there is, exists conformal killing uh, uh, vector with this property. Um, uh, so if we introduce the length of this conformal uh, killing vector, then of course, rho equal to zero, it's, uh, it's the uh, uh, horizon. So on this uh, horizon, we want that the, the restriction of the metric is this tautological metric coming from the conformal structure of our fixed metric on, on M. And now the, the conditions for the Einstein tensor is the following. So, so uh, why I contracting here with some vectors in order to get other uh, order of vanishing 
for the uh, these uh, infinity uh, indices and non-infinity indices. So this x is arbitrary vector that is tangent to rho equal to zero. And uh, so this is I so from point of view of evolution, these are this geometric part. But of course later, so if we uh, uh, considering this Pfefferman Graham uh, uh, metric, we we imposing some gauge. So we want first of all that this uh, uh, this t tensor is uh, t d over dt, and we want that this uh, this um, uh, vector in the direction rho, uh, in fact, it's a generate null geodesic. And if one impose this additional condition, so this is something like a gauge, then we get in the standard uh, form of the metric. And there is yet third thing. So if the way I was writing this in terms of Einstein tensor, because then uh, in this condition, the trace of uh, 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 d by two Taylor expansion of the metric does not appear. Whereas in the standard Pfefferman-Graham construction, we can also impose some uh, specific conditions on this part of the of the matrix, so not other, so only on the trace of this of this uh, um, uh, part of the Taylor expansion. But this is for, from the point of view of evolution, is some normalization on non-dynamical field because this uh, this trace is coming only uh, without derivatives in our equations. Okay, and, and if one do like that, so if one impose these conditions, then it's equivalent to this, uh, this form of the, for the uh, uh, Ricci tensor for uh, ambient metric. Okay, so, so we see that uh, uh, if we thinking how to apply this uh, shocke brua method, then we see that we have here two problems that we have so uh, we would like to impose the uh, harmonic gauge, whereas here is already some gauge applied. And second, we have also some non-dynamical fields that of course they uh, have to deal with that. Okay, so maybe let me say. So, uh, so first is this uh, excessive gauge fixing. So from the uh, say technical point of view, what is our problem? Problem is that um, uh, the propagation of the gauge um, uh, in this shocked Brua method um, uh, coming from the Bianchi identities. And here Bianchi identities we already used to recover uh, these other parts of the of the tensor of the Ricci tensor from Armionio. So this is uh, this is fact in this construction of the Pfefferman Graham that in fact you need you need you you can only assume this thing. And all other automatically uh, follows. Okay, so so how to deal with this problem? Um, it turns out that one one should construct this gauge fixing function. So in this shocker Brua method, we have this gauge fixing function. We should construct them from these parts, these excessive parts of the of the Ricci uh, tensor that we are not imposing. Okay, and that's the second field is this non-dynamical field. And this non-dynamical field we should just cancel from the equations and impose at the, at the end. Okay, so maybe I will just shortly say. Uh, so we let us introduce the, the symbols for the this Ricci tensor at t equal to to one, and we construct this uh, this gauge fixing function. So we we have now a bit more. So we have not only gauge fixing function this g g mu that are for the uh, a diffeomorphism constraint, but also gamma that uh, 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 is corresponding to conformal uh, 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 conformal gauge. Okay, and and they they have this property that uh, if uh, uh, we are on this Pfefferman Graham uh, metric, uh, then uh, they are proportional. So this uh, zero component, so in Taylor expansion of this gamma is proportional to Ricci scalar. And zero component of this g is proportional to this uh, f uh, function. So if they if they will be zero, then we'll be in this Anderson gauge. Okay, and then we have this gauge fixed tensor, and it turns out that if we look how it's looking like, then it's exactly in this form that we uh, we had in this G, uh, GJMS operator. So it's it's hyperbolic in this uh, generalized sense. And it's also this recursive, so we can. So in this case, we can always uh, recover this higher, 
higher uh, uh, tensor, uh, this higher uh, Taylor expansion of the metric up to this uh, 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 finite uh, uh, um, uh, uh, order that uh, the, the, uh, the couple. Okay, and if we impose now, so um, uh, we're looking now for the solution of this system, we can solve it. Then we're using Bianchi identities and Bianchi identities again, giving us very similar system of the, of the equation, it's again, this generalized hyperbolic and also recursive. So, so we can repeat the same uh, things that we had for the uh, for uh, 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 Einstein equation. So it's, we only need to check that this uh, that these um, initial conditions vanish, and it turns out that initial conditions vanish if we uh, uh, if constraints are satisfied, and if these R and F mu, so these properties of being in this uh, Anderson gauge, so vanishing of the Ricci scalar and, uh, harmoni and harmonicity of the uh, coordinates, vanish to sufficiently high order. Because of course, they, it's not enough that they vanish to the first order, like in the, in the case of uh, uh, Einstein equations, they need to vanish to very high order because we have high order of the metric even at the initial set. Okay, this still will not ensure that, um, uh, so even if this E satisfies this condition and these gauges like here vanish, still this S mu nu, so the Ricci, Ricci tensor will not be uh, zero because we, we're lacking the last condition, but this like, last condition is exactly this non-dynamical field. So we can always now by hand impose it and if we impose it, then the Ricci tensor vanish to the given order, and we have a solution to the <coughs> this Pfeffermann Graham, uh, say Anderson Pfeffermann Graham equation. So it's also well posed. Okay. So how much time do I have? Uh, three, four minutes more. Uh, two, two, four minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so I will only shortly say that. Um, uh, um, uh, we, in fact, we can impose always um, uh, the infinite order Ricci flat extension. Um, it's, it's a bit different than in Kildian signature because um, it's turned out that we can also uh, evolve this uh, extension from the given Cauchy surface. So we always can assume that. So maybe this I will skip. But I will say about the propagation of these almost Einstein structures. So in fact, uh, so we, we had it in the, uh, I think lecture the, uh, yesterday of uh, Rod Gover, but it was in terms of the tractor. So, so of course, one, if one have, uh, one can also uh, write these conditions for uh, almost Einstein in terms of the uh, ambient metric. And then it's turned out that uh, uh, this, um, uh, there need to exist co covariantly constant, say, covector, this ij, um, um, but covariantly constant to this order. So if, if we are in solution of Einstein equations, of course, we can choose extension. So this is the, the, from our, uh, we know this expansion of g only to some specific order, but we can assume that this given just by that. And then this uh, covariantly constant uh, tensor is given by as a derivative of this sigma. Of course, if we change this extension, then, uh, or we, yeah, we choose some random extension, uh, then uh, it's not zero anymore, but there is this mis uh, error term occurring, but uh, it's not so important. Okay, so how, you, how one can uh, uh, propagate, and this propagation turns out that is very similar to, uh, to the, uh, uh, um, a question how, how one can show that uh, um, uh, if we have initial data with the uh, uh, killing vector, uh, whether it's prop uh, whether a property of existence of killing vector propagating uh, to future and how to show some things like that. So let us propagate this uh, sigma by this equation. So this equation, it's like this GJMS uh, equation, except that uh, sigma has weight one, so it's, uh, uh, it's not invariant under T, but it's, uh, uh, 
uh, changing uh, uh, by the scale. And of course, it depends on the extension. But so we assume that we have this Ricci flat extension. So now if we apply to this equation, so we can, we can evolve it. So we have the solution to that. We apply twice the, uh, the uh, covariant derivative. We can com commute it and we getting the, such an equation for this uh, uh, um, uh, derivative of, of our, uh, uh, our um, uh, covector. So this is again the uh, hyperbolic equation. So if on initial condition it's satisfied, it will be satisfied everywhere. So that means that it's everywhere. So if on the initial conditions this is zero, then of course it will be zero everywhere. So it's linear equation. And one, one can check that it's reduced to the standard uh, conditions for the existence of, the, of this uh, um, conformal um, uh, factor that's um, giving us Einstein equations. Okay, so maybe I will finish. So summary is basically what I said. So uh, it's well posed system. So it's, uh, and apparently it's a bit surprised because uh, if one look only from the, if one do forget about that it's coming from this ambient metric construction, then it's, uh, there is this uh, uh, degenerate, this uh, multiple characteristics and it's not clear that it, uh, it's well posed. But, but it is well posed and almost Einstein conditions propagate also by hyperbolic equations. So we can, uh, we have this stability. So we can even construct initial data by some hypersurfaces that uh, uh, transverse the, the boundary. It's, uh, so it's quite, quite useful method to, to show this uh, stability in many ways. Okay, and then of course this, this method also applied to many constructions uh, given by this ambient, ambient metric, these powers of uh, conformal powers of uh, say D'Alembertians because we are in Lorentzian signature. So we, we can prove that there always exists in Lorentzian. So globally hyperbolic uh, situation, the scale uh, for which the Q curvature vanish and so on. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> There are any questions? Maybe you, maybe is, is there anything known in the dimensional case? Any progress has been made? Or so, so can you can you repeat? In the um, so your focus was in the even dimensional case. Ah, you mean about oh, so so yeah. point is that I think in the case for this positive uh, cosmological constant so. Uh, this is by say uh, people working on in partial differential equation it's regarded as a simple so i think that it's known in in any dimensions that there is this uh, this uh, uh, stability but but uh, why this this method i i think it's interesting because it's giving uh, an alternative system that that also has lagrangian so one can, for example, look for uh, for charges or for something using exactly this uh, this system instead of Einstein equations. So just from the point of stability, I think it's uh, it is known in any dimensions. Okay. So so it's uh, and uh, so if if one look for other uh, so say like zero cosmological constant, so this method also giving some information, but then you need to uh, so. Usually, uh, people don't assume that on the that um, uh, at least in say this uh, PDA community they they usually don't assume that we have uh, a smooth uh, conformal boundary. And and of course, in the case of zero cosmological constant, then uh, this boundary is a null surface, so there's something can. Uh, uh, propagate along this, so so it's it, that's why it's a bit more complicated. So, but 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 it's there are the class of solutions which have smooth boundary, even uh, uh, and the, then they uh, to this it can uh, can be applied. So I think Lionel has uh, also a question. Yes. Question, yeah. Hi, <coughs> sorry, that's very nice by the way. That's a beautiful talk. The um uh. So the reason why Helmut Friedrich got picked to the post by sort of uh, Chris Dulu and Kleinman was because uh, 
uh, in four dimensions, the existence of mass means you have a conformal singularity at um, I zero, space like infinity. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm just feeling confused as to whether that's still the case in higher dimensions or whether this will allow, allow you to prove stability of asymptotically simple, simple space times in higher dimensions. So I would, so I, I, so I don't know. But I think there is, there is, um, uh, so if one. Uh, I mean, the fall off is faster in higher dimensions, you know, because it's, uh, I mean, the mass term is going like a, a kind of a Coulomb charge and the Coulomb charge falls are faster. So you, you should be in good shape. I'm just speaking out of. Uh, yeah, so, so, I, 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 so I have, uh, so uh, the honest questions I, I cannot answer, but, but I have some, uh, some, uh, uh, thought about that. So, so uh, point is that uh, suppose that we we looking for example in Minkowski. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, in Minkowski, of course, we can compactify, and then I zero is uh, a point of, on the sphere. So, truly speaking, is from this point this uh, this conformal point of view, we have the uh, the uh, compact Cauchy surface, and it's known. Uh, I think, okay, at least for Einstein equation, but I think for, for most of the equations with, the, with, uh, with constraints, uh, that if you have compact, uh, a compact surface uh, and there, is, there are symmetries of the initial data, then you are not allowed to have uh, arbitrary, um, um, uh, so maybe space of solution has some, some conical singularities. Mm -hmm. And and uh, uh, and I expect that if one look so so to avoid this conical singularity, you need to assume something sp very special about the variation. So if you change the initial data a bit, you need to assume something special. So I expect that in uh, um, uh, that uh, this. Uh, 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 that this is the reason why there, there should be this singularity also in the higher dimensions. Because if you make this uh, small variation, then uh, okay, you cannot have this uh, this um, uh, compact Cauchy surface anymore. Because then you would need to uh, so so this this char this uh, these conditions that you need to assume they are vanishing of the charges. Mm. So in fact, they yes, so they would zero be, mass and the mass yes, was yes. the mass theorem tells you that you have to. Yes. Have Yes, I think this uh, 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 could well be an obstruction. Yes, uh, I just, uh, but, but on the other hand, you have more fall off in higher dimensions, so you might get away with it. I, I, I just don't know what the story is there. So yeah, yeah I, I, I also, to speak, don't know. But, but I think it, this would be, from, from my point of view, this would be a way to, to somehow check that. I, I would expect that it's also in higher dimensions there is this uh, problem. Yeah, yeah, it probably so is. From, yeah. from what I uh, what I said, I would deduce that, but uh, I don't I don't know that it was checked or. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again.